I'm not covering the tandem bow in this series, but that's something we'll do in the next series. Uh, this series is dedicated really to the most common face mask we use in our practice, um, which is the um, uh, dynamic protraction face mask. Some people know this as a petite uh, 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 face mask. Um, the traditional face mask was by uh, Henri Delaire, and it was um, more a frame here and here with framework here. This is a much more comfortable face mask. Um, children can sleep with this um, on their side and on their back, just not on their stomach, whereas they found the other one a little bit more uncomfortable. And I'm going to go through the adjustments and then we're going to go to a live clinical patient and, and fit one of these. Now obviously this needs to be fitted to some form of anchorage appliance. Historically we would be using bonded hyraxes with reversible pads. More and more now we're using um, the not so much TADs, uh, but what we call skeletal anchorage systems. Uh, an example is the Hugo de Klerk bollard. Um, another is uh, the whole uh, customization uh, of using a surgical mini plate. And that way we're getting the force through the bone and moving the whole maxilla. Whereas when you use any appliance, yes, you are getting skeletal change, but you're also getting a lot of dental alveolar change. Now, indications for this face mask. Number one, class three, mid-face deficient patients. So three A's. Um, also three C's. And definitely not vertical cases. Any patient who has a vertical growth pattern that's class three or has a history of TMD, you don't want to use a face mask with a chin cup because the action of the chin cup is to rotate the mandible backward. As it rotates backward, it's going to um, worsen the vertical dimensions of the face, increase them, and it's going to put more pressure on the joint. So if they're brachycephalic, perfect. If they're neutral, perfect. So in summary, indications for this mask, 3A, 3C, neutral or brachycephalic patients. Um, contraindications, um, 3Bs, because face masks don't work on 3Bs, you can't stop the growth of the mandible, um, and any of the 3As or 3Cs that have vertical tendency um, or history associated with TMD. So when you buy the kit, it comes with very simple to follow instructions. And um, I also give the patients um, post-operative instructions. Our job is to use this Allen key and adjust three locations. The first location is the forehead. We want it to be comfortable. We want it to be just um, below the hairline. The second is the chin cup, and we want that to be comfortable on the chin. And the third is this bar where the elastics will be worn. Now this bar always needs to be at a 30 degree um, downward forward position to the elastics. So if you're putting your elastics on the face if you're putting your elastics on the expander and the elastics come vertically, it's going to irritate the patient's cheek. Not only that, the maxilla doesn't grow in that direction. So the hooks are placed near the center of resistance of the maxilla, which is normally between the canine and bicuspid. Um, the pull is about 600 grams per side and the vector is downward forward 30 degrees. These are things we'll show you clinically uh, with the patient. Um, in hot weather, particularly in countries like Australia, when children sleep with this, they tend to sweat a lot and sometimes you'll get a rash around the chin. So there's two possibilities. One is you can get a, uh, a round burr and drill holes in this chin cup so that they can breathe. Um, the second is rather than use the inserts which are given to you by the company that manufactures, these are replacement inserts, you can cut out the exact same design from what's um, called odor readers. Odor readers are charcoal inserts for shoes um, and they're great because they're sticky on one side but what they have is ab absorptive material on this side. So rather than use these, you get the patient to buy um, the odor reader shoe insoles and you cut that shape out. Um, that seems to work well. Most of the problem is sweating 
if it's um, uh, irritation, then you can adjust these and we're going to show you how to customize them. I've had one or two um, uh, patients that we've actually fully customized this. How have we done that? We've taken an impression of the chin and my technician then with cold cure acrylic has actually customized that to the chin. And that of course is like um, a, a bespoke uh, face mask, but a lot of extra work goes into that. So as far as the pads, there's the forehead pad, there's the chin pad. Um, and remember, if we look at it side on, the direction of pull is in this method. Very comfortable to use. I've had very good compliance with these um, face masks. So now let's go to the clinic and actually fit one of those. We're going to introduce Monique. Monique is 10 years old? 11. 11, okay. And um, so if I just talk about Monique's case. So Monique is a class three um, maxillary deficient patient. So narrow maxilla and also um, maxilla behind mandible. Her treatment um, involved a bonded hyrax um, with reverse pull face mask uh, therapy. So what we're gonna to do today is uh, actually fit her face mask. Now, everything's in different orders. Uh, I do basically three things for these kids. One is we widen the upper jaw, which is the bonded hyrax. Secondly, we do two by four, high torque brackets inverted to remodel A point. She's already got that in place. And then we do the face mask. Sometimes I'll do the Hyrax face mask, then two by four going to a Frankel. Other times I'd combine. Doesn't really matter which order you do it, but obviously you want to continue to drive that maxilla forward. So looking at where we started, you can see the negative um, overjet. Um, you could also see that um, we have quite a constriction of the upper arch form to the large lower. If you have a look now, can you give us a really big smile for the camera? That's the go. You can see we've actually gone to class two, and that's very good, efficient face mask therapy. So we're fitting the reversible face mask. First thing we do is um, make the uh, forehead strap and the chin strap comfortable. One thing I'll just show you here that is a big risk factor uh, I've had some patients, uh, I've seen some transfer cases where this has been fitted, where that, can you just let that go? Yep. It's sliding down and this is sticking out, almost ready for a tracheostomy. So what we don't want, we don't want anything sticking this way. Once you've customised the mask, any excess should be up here. And then what I normally do is get a high speed handpiece and cut the excess, then put the plastic cap on top to stop the rubbing. So it doesn't matter how much yeah, so that is uh, a big no-no. And you can see that on the profile because you can see if she rolls over in her sleep, um, you know, that's going to cause some serious injury. In reverse, if you can push it straight up, yep, great. Um, doesn't matter if you even leave that like that, but if the kid is find that annoying, you can cut this uh, anywhere you like and put that cap back on there. It's very easy to do. High-speed handpiece, Joe Dandy disc uh, does that. Now, just showing that the adjustments we can do here. This is probably a little bit too low, it's rubbing on the eyebrows. We just pop the forehead strap up a bit, great. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the Allen key. Yep. Now we'll do the chin cup. And just while Con's adjusting that, you can see where the middle bar is. The middle bar should always be about 15 to 30 degrees downward and forward of the occlusal plane. Um, and that gives us the best vector of pull. We're gonna see that in a minute. Open for us, open. Open, close. Open again, close. Open. Open, close. So give us a bit of room there to move. And then, so that's tight, that's tight, that's tight, that's tight. But then finally, we do this last. The reason we have in the middle bow loops is because many times we do cross elastics 
um, if the elastics are rubbing against the uh, cheek uh, or the uh, commissure of the mouth, we um, uh, cross them this way. So we still get the pull but without the irritation. Uh, I start the child on a light elastic. Um, uh, I use Fox here. Then we would um, go to the stronger elastic. Remember all these elastics that uh, are used for face masks are heavy extra oral elastics. So the elastics we're using in the Damon system are light intra oral. Uh, here they're heavy extra oral. Now you could um, measure using a extra oral strain gauge. Uh, the gauge that we use is just a commercial fishing gauge, what you'd use to weigh um, uh, your catch. Uh, because the force we want is about 600 grams, 600 grams per side. So what we would do is we'd put the elastic on the appliance, stretch it to here and measure uh, the force. So, so let's, let's look now just where the elastic exits the mouth. That's your face mask hook and um, the elastic will go from there and should we pull, pull it down, down and forward. Now that force can be measured by simply stretching it to the mask and we're looking for about 600 grams of force. As this is working, obviously you'll have to have a shorter elastic to deliver the same amount of force. Now the next thing we look at is the vector of force. So this elastic may exit too parallel to the occlusal plane. It's going to irritate the uh, lip and it's not going to deliver the force the way we want. Just put it on there just so we can show the wrong position. Great, okay. Now if you can see here, that is not in a downward pull. So what we need to do is adjust this lever to get it in the right position. Good, okay, great. Now, if you can see, right, yep, okay. Yes. So, now I'm just going to, so you can see, we're going to vary the elastic here to show you what's incorrect and what's correct. That's incorrect, it's pulling horizontally out. So we're going to adjust now to show you the vector we want, 15 to 30 degrees. See, keep going down a little bit more. Perfect. Great. Now we're talking. Good. Okay. Now. How's that feel? Not rubbing on your lip there. Good. Great. Right. Now. If it was rubbing on the lip, we're going to do a cross elastic. So, Con, can you just first, show the crossover? First, you do this one first. Yep. You do that before going full cross. So, you can see by moving the elastics this way, we're um, having less irritation. If you only have X number of elastics and you're running out of force, like the 600 grams is now dropping to 300, you can do a double elastic. So, what uh, Con will uh, show now is two elastics on either side. So we're now showing how to increase the force using the same elastics. Basically we're using two elastics but in the form of a triangle. That gives you a very good vector of force to keep pulling that maxilla downward and forward 15 to 30 degrees with a 600 gram force. Just um, again looking at the ideal elastic position, uh, which is the vector 15 to 30 degrees. The force we've measured at 600 grams uh, is not irritating uh, the commissure, inner commissure of the lip, and um, the mask is securely fastened here and comfortable enough that. Can you open and close your mouth for me? And open and close and open and close. And when in that test, if she opens and that slides down, then we need to adjust that again. But that's a very good fit. For the, for the push, for the pull. What feels tighter, this side or this side? This side. 
This one, okay? Not the force. So the way you increase the force, um, I start them on two, 300 grams to get used to the appliance, but then we're working up to 600 grams. At the follow-up visit, if the 600 grams is dropping down, you have two choices. You double the elastics, like I'm showing on the right side, or you use a smaller elastic, so a heavier force extra oral elastic, um, as I'm showing on this side. Both will be effective, but you've got to measure at every visit.